Hello and welcome to a Python and Django live code hangout. Today we'll be working on the Western Friend website. I've got the source code up here. And I'll make one quick adjustment. We'll get the browser up. We're going to work on a task to create pagination on the Western Friend Library. This task has been open for a while, a little over a month, almost two months actually. And I'm just looking for kind of a low hanging fruit to try out today. I haven't been live coding on this website. I've been doing a lot of um, work with the data migration. So I've been in the kind of database level, writing a couple of Python scripts for data cleaning and also been doing some manual data prep. So today let's do uh, some code. Create a branch from the main. We're going to use this real Python article. I'll just assign myself here. It's just clear. And um, this is part of our minimum viable launch. Uh, we're pretty far uh, through the known issues that there's going to be more unknowns uh, emerging, I'm sure. But so this line will get pushed back. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to try to, uh, our goal is to launch by August. So here's the current website, westernfriend.org. We're working on the library page and there's library items going back to 2012. And there's like 48 pages of them. <laughs> so it's quite a lot. And this is just using the regular Drupal. Um, it's a faceted search view and standard pagination. We're going to pretty much replicate this um, with ellipses or el elided values around uh, the current value. And so to do that, I found an article on real Python. It's probably the best article I've uh, come across on pagination, like a real world example of pagination, because as uh, many of the examples I found are kind of toy examples, they don't grow beyond uh, like a couple of pages. and in real world uh, websites, you'll oftentimes get, you know, tens or hundreds of pages uh, as the content grows. And to do that, you're basically in a funny spot where the um, uh, the paginator gets just like row and row and row of um, pagination items. So let's get our shell activated. Poetry. Make sure we've installed everything. Bad interpreter, uh, pipx. Three eleven should run though. Let's try it through 311. So like I said, I haven't been doing much development here recently. I'll grab a drink of water while this is installing.
All right. Errors. This is not cool. Off to a bad start. That's right. We'll go work through these. What I might have done is hmm. my Python environment all messed up. So we can get that reinstalled. <clears throat> Keep an eye over here on chat. And poetry is good to go. All right, so see into the app directory, which is where we already are. We're Get a poetry show going on. Make sure everything's installed. So yeah, Pipex uh, is a package manager for Python applications. It puts them in isolated environments. That way they don't clutter up your main environment. As like is common when we install things like poetry at a global level, we would install it into our like global packages and it has dependencies. So somehow this poetry installation got uh, corrupted, but that's fine. <laughs> work through it. Uh, I just had to kind of get my mind grok what to, what I was using Pipex for, for just a moment. Got to reset things. Everyone's small reset my brain. So basically, uh, let's take a look at the app. We'll run it now. Run. There we go. Got a lot of deprecation notices. I'm waiting for basically the next release of Wagtail to um, essentially clean those up. I've gone through and removed the parts from the code where I'm managing in the app here uh, that, where the deprecation notices were raised. But a lot of these are coming from Wagtail Core or Wagtail Media. Okay. Ah, yes, yes. Okay, so then to run this server, we need a database server, right? And to do that, we run Colima start. I've had to re uh, introduce uh, basically Docker Compose into this project because we are running some, we're using the search the Wagtail search engine and it needs a database like Postgres. And rather than expecting people to install Postgres on their local machine, I, and myself included, I just set up a Docker con, uh, pose. Definition here. And rather than use the Docker UI, I'm just using this Colima project. Mm -hmm. 
just a container runtime, lightweight, minimal setup. The Docker UI was kind of heavy, unnecessarily so. But once you get Colima running, once it starts up, then you're good to go. You can run Docker Compose and it just seems to work. I don't know, I haven't gotten too deep into it. What we're gonna do now is just run this Docker Compose up. Detaching it. So most of this is outlined in the readme here. I can run that server. And I don't think I need to run migrations right now. So there we are, I'll put this. Oh, that's that, just checking the chat, make sure. So we'll hop over here into web browser. And we have this scaffolded content here. And what we're gonna be looking at today is the library. I've only got one item, so we don't have any pagination currently. So let's hop over to the code side of this and we'll look at the library. And the first thing is I'll look at models. Uh, normally in Django projects, you'll define that URLs pi and, it, and views pi and they, a uh, view will render at a URL, but in this case we're using Wagtail CMS and it actually does that for us. Uh, I just need to get, to, so it defines these um, models called pages and uh, pages actually are pretty powerful. And here we are at the library index page. It inherits from the Wagtail page model and it handles the routing and everything for us. Um, here I just, it uses some similar um, idiomatics or some similar uh, uh, concept as Django it's, uh, so that it's familiar. So here we use the get context method, which allows me to, um, you know, populate a context dictionary and uh, work with pagination. So let's say uh, items per page should be one. Oops, just one, just for a moment. And we'll create another item here. So then I'm going to log in to the web to, oops, it's loading still my tech and now I can essentially create a child page which is a basically a media library media item and I think there's not that many required fields let's just see if I can publish that uh, yep, so we got the library and now we've got two items, but now we have our basic pagination and it looks fine and it works good, but once this gets to like 10, 15, you know, pages or more, it starts to look bad. And I have an importer script that runs and, and uh, imports like quite a lot of media items. I should have uh, created a uh, factory model, model factory that I could have generated a bunch of content, but um, let's see how far we can get with just reading this guide. And essentially what we wanna do is find this page object in our code or this paginator, I believe is what they're calling this request page. Hmm. So this is a, a function-based view paginator here. Paginator get page. Okay. And then it looks like we're going to they're touching into. Uh,
here we've done that. So in any case, I've got this. And you know, I'm surprised it does that. It doesn't adjust these automatically, but uh, let's just do it. Yeah, and it's right there in the library items page. All right, so now we'll go into our template. So yeah, essentially this model is serving up the index page and we're populating that with some library items and just giving a paginated interface to browse those li those library items. So now we come over here. Okay. Did I write this? I don't usually write code like that. <laughs> Blame. Yeah, myself. For page number. See, I don't like this because uh, it's a single letter and if I want to select and change that, it's going to be a bit of a pain. Whereas now I can just say, hey, give me all of the page number variables multi-select for example page number number see I can see oh I had a typo there now give me all this page number see there we go boom multi cursor and everything so that's that and it's consistent and explicit it tells me what it is okay and then let's just I must have written this while back I don't know why my code style it's changed, I suppose, in the last few years. All right, so, uh, see, here we go, I, I again. And there, one more time, let me just try to avoid some typos here. Keep an eye on the chat over there. So yeah, let me know. Uh, your comments on uh, what kind of projects you're building there. If you're looking uh, at uh, templating language, um, front end, server side rendering, such as we've got with Django and a lot of these other um, uh, traditional web frameworks, or are you looking at a single page app or some kind of a hybrid model as the single page apps are now back into the server side rendering mindset. Okay, so now we're gonna do this. If page let me see what I've got here so that's the current page So 
So I'm going to use an LF here because I want this, I want the current page to be highlighted by showing the active class. As we can see over here. Uh, okay, didn't quite work that way. Ah, yeah, let's figure out what I'm going. Or could I've changed this loop? Oh uh, yeah, here we go. Put a typo there. This should be library items page dot just to delighted pages, I think. So check my model here. That page is not an integer. Okay. So, okay, let's just go back here to this. Library is not working. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I see this page I passed it in the wrong argument so the page is literally this page number so this could be more clear Mixing up stuff a bit, not too bad though. Page number, and this would be yeah, it's looking a little bit better there. Oops, ready? There we go. Okay, so now we got our back. So that's I've got the active class. That's all right. It's gonna be fixed in a moment, but the number one is our active class. Default page is one. We get the page number. And then I just need to fix the page markup because it looks like I've got something wrong here. So come back over here, close that. I'm not using that. So page number is active. That's working. Else, and there's the problem. One problem at least. <laughs> Details. Now I was thinking about if I can have Jet Chat GPT do this for me. I don't think so. I'm going to be experimenting with that a bit. All right, page one, page two. There we go. All right, so now we got this is working. This pagination is fixed again. So. We need the elif. Basically, if it's the active page, it won't be um, elided. So I can just do the elif here. Elif. Page numbers. Yeah. 
Yeah, this page object here in our case is the library item. And we will then show essentially Okay, page number, so it takes on the ellipses. I get it. Interesting. <laughs> I could just put the ellipses there myself. Whoops, save that. And then else, show me the page number with a link. Okay, okay. <laughs> Not too bad. Now what I'm going to do is just generate a bunch of uh, items. And I can also do this over here, I believe. Library items. So this is all the Wagtail CMS. It handles this whole back end for you. It's like basically, I think, uh, WordPress level user experience without all the kind of headache, the WordPress headaches, level headaches. <laughs> Well, specifically, the uh, WordPress ecosystem is a bit of a mess, and there's a bunch of just spamminess all over the place there. Everything's uh, premium, freemium. Things that are security vulnerabilities and just random forms for tech support. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of why we moved away from WordPress. Although it's, I mean, overall, it's very popular and powerful. It's just a plugin ecosystem. Uh, it's just so messy and when you want to build any kind of base uh, website that's any more powerful than a blog well you get into a bunch of troubles yeah so we migrated to django and uh, our drupal first and uh, we've built the site for several years uh, with drupal evolved it and uh, maintained it and now we're just realizing we need a little bit more customization so we're rebuilding it in Wagtail and Django, and it's been a really great experience, a great developer experience, um, fairly manageable learning curve, very mature and stable and functional. Um, of course, rewriting anything is going to take longer than anticipated, and this has certainly been it's <laughs> been a long-standing project. Yeah, but let's see. So let's put this in a um, hmm, just a little bit of something around there. We'll put it in a span. Uh, let's see, actually. Oops. We will put it in a span with margin X2. Maybe. Let's try that. Give it a little bit of margin around there. Okay. Did that the right one? No, no, that's the wrong one. Shoot. <laughs> that was the right idea. Wrong area. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so I'm using a bit of boring technology here. Bootstrap 5, Django, and Wagtail CMS. But it's really uh, <laughs> been a delightful developer experience. And uh, a lot of the stuff is just handled for me. And we dip into CSS and, uh, you know, HTML templates as needed. So if I go to three, does that four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve? Great. Let's do a recap. This is a, I think, a good stopping point. 
Very cool. This is this is nice yeah, pagination. So I'll give credit. Everything's pretty much within this span here. Okay, ready to go. Green here, we've been working on the Western Friend website. We are working on the media library. This is what we, the page we worked on today. And what we built was a little bit of uh, pagination here. And specifically this pagination should elide pages. Uh, so that we don't have just this wrapping wrapping pagination prior to this we had a, some you know 40 pages and uh, they would all just be listed there and uh, kind of a row would spill over to the next it's not very pleasant looking but uh, following basic um, mm -hmm. tutorials on uh, the pagination and even the uh, Django official documentation it's uh, they're more or less toy examples and when you do have a site that has been around for a while and it's mature and perhaps you know has a lot of content it will quickly outgrow the basic pagination examples so we looked for and found real python had a real world example and quite an extensive uh, article covering django pagination and the ins and outs including if you're using a sort of a uh, single page application uh, front end you can create paginated API responses as well. So I highly recommend this article on real Python. It is called pagination for a user friendly Django app. Here is our wagtail backend. And what I've done is just created several of these media library items. Uh, just as an aside, wagtail generates this whole interactive backend for you with only a few lines of code. It's a relatively mature and um, forward thinking content management system. So if you're thinking about building a content management website, uh, start with a good foundation, Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. Uh, consider it as an alternative to WordPress or Drupal or those other types of content management systems, as well as the underlying Django web framework for any kind of other functionality you would wanna build out. So the changes that we made today are very brief, but I'll kind of go over what we're doing with this pagination in general. So we're getting a list of library items that are published. Wagtail has a uh, publication workflow. When I add an item here, uh, it has a, you add, you know, the relative fields, relevant fields, title and other fields you define as a Django model. And it's got a draft status and moderation workflow. Uh, these I published directly, but if you if I mark it as a draft, it, it will not be uh, returned with this live query set. So that's the key thing here while we're using that. And I've got a faceted search interface. We didn't def de find this today, so I'm going to omit that for now. But basically, we want to be able to kind of narrow down uh, the content you see in this library index page. Uh, to find the appropriate materials. So we've got a search and uh, facets and uh, paginative viewer. Uh, by default, we'll start off with one page. If there's no, if there's nothing in the URL argument uh, here, path, it's just gonna start you off in page one. It's gonna look for that query string there. And right now I've got it set to one item per page just for testing purposes, uh, but I could change that to two items per page and wait for the server to reload. And there's some deprecation warnings there from the upcoming uh, Wagtail 5 release. Uh, so it's essentially the same code. I just, for the sake of doing this um, experiment, I needed to get, quickly get to the ellipses. So I didn't want to have to add a bunch of content. As you can see, the elided um, page is missing there. Here we go, got it back. So what we're gonna do is try to get um, the paginated results for the page number that came in from the query string argument. Uh, if we can't, if the query string argument is anything like hello, that's not an integer. Oh, okay, we've got an exception there. 
Ah, good thing I tried that out uh, because I'm using it here. So I'll come back to this. I'll have to yeah debug this off stream, but I think I can move it into this. Uh, I'll put in a, I'll put a check around there, something like a, like if type. Huh, good thing I tried that. So previously I had that code so that you know if somebody passed in an arbitrary string, it wouldn't give them any results. It would just go to the default page, which is one. And it turns out this function needs an integer and is the input. So yeah, I can fix that. And um, if there's no results on that page, it's just going to use the last page. Like so, if I if we have like ten pages of paginated results and somebody asks for page number fifty, it'll just go to the tenth page, no problem. Um, so if type. So it needs to be an integer. I think that should be enough, right? Let's double check that. If we get past an integer, and if my Python knowledge is good, what we're going to do is um, in our template, we're, we're looping over these pages and we're using the ellipsis, but the template code wasn't updating uh, where the ellipsis should be. So we just need to regenerate that, get the elided page range, which gives you the number of pages, the default, I'm just using the default value, with the elided values at the appropriate spots, left and right of the current page. I think if I go a little bit further, ooh, and now it's not working now. Let me do it with a proper, I'll fix this off summary. That, that should have worked though. I mean, that was in a different section of the side of the thing. There we go, we got it back anyways. Uh, so it gives us the, should give us on both sides if I can get a good example. Hmm, this is actually not working quite how I was expecting it to work. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's just in, have to have more pages to be able to see them both at the same time. Interesting, okay. Just do a little print debug real quick. String, okay. Okay. That makes sense. So I'll have to cast that to an integer. But then that'll throw an error. Huh, I'm gonna have to make this code work off stream. That should definitely be an integer though. What if I raise an exception? Try, accept, uh, hmm. Well, nonetheless, that's how we got the pagination to work. And I've just got a little bit of a puzzle to sort out to ensure this is a patient integer. Okay, well, that's been a recap of today's Python and Django live code session. Thanks for checking out the live stream. If you've got any uh, suggestions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm always uh, open to any uh, feedback. It helps me learn. I've learned quite a lot from comments people have shared. If you're working on any similar open source projects, also let me know and I'll be glad to stop by the project on stream and maybe we can check out um, some issues that you're working on. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.